In this video, I'm going to show you can add different style icons to a map in your bubble application. You can see here in this example that I have two different types of icons. One represents a private club, the red ones, and the green ones represent public clubs. Before we get into the actual building, I just want to talk a bit about what we're going to build in this video. Paddle is a racket sport that's exploding popularity at the moment, and I found this map online of all the paddle courts in the UK. The issue I have with this map is that some of these courts are private, so they're not accessible to members of the public, whereas for other ones, anybody can walk up and start playing. So what I'd like to do is recreate a version of this map, but rather than have these just blue markers all over the map, I'd rather have different color icons or different symbols to represent those courts that are public versus those that are private. Throughout this tutorial, we're going to be using Mapbox. Mapbox is a third-party service that makes it easy to add powerful maps to your application. It is a paid service, but they have a pretty generous free tier. And if you sign up for an account on mapbox.com, you'll be able to access your account dashboard. And in order to integrate Mapbox with our Bubble app, we're going to need to install a plugin. So if you go to the plugins tab of your Bubble editor and search for the beautiful maps Mapbox plugin, that's going to allow you to hook up to Mapbox and add those maps to your Bubble app. This is a Cranford Tech plugin. Once you have the beautiful maps Mapbox plugin installed, we're going to need to add an access token. If you scroll down to the bottom of the plugin page, you'll see there's two fields here for token and for token dev. And the way we get these tokens is if we go to our Mapbox dashboard, click on create a token, and we're going to call this paddle map token. And then I do recommend before creating the token, restricting it to specific URLs. The reason we're doing that is because if someone can access your token, then it's not going to work on their URL. It's only going to work on the one that you specified here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to preview my blank bubble app, and I'm going to take everything from just before version test, copy that, and then paste it into the URL box there. We'll add that, and then we'll create our token. Okay, I've created my token, and I'm just going to paste it in to these fields here. I will delete it after I'm done with this video, of course. Now that we have our plugin installed, let's go back to the design tab of our bubble editor. And I have a really simple setup here. It's just a group with a text element inside of it. Now, because I've added the Mapbox plugin, we have access to this Mapbox map element. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to drop it in my group. You can see here are some default settings that you can play around with, and we may do so in a minute. But I'm just going to quickly change the layout so that it doesn't have a fixed width. It has a min weight of 300 pixels. We will give it a fixed height for now of, let's go with 480, and see how that looks. So let's just preview this and see how it looks at the moment. We're not going to have any custom icons or markers there. So let's just get rid of debug mode for now and get a better look at our map. And the first thing I note is that we're pretty zoomed out. The map we're going to be putting together today is really focused on paddle courts in the London area. So I'm just going to zoom in on the map. And that does work, but I'd obviously like the default zoom to be a bit closer. So what I'm going to do is back on my map, I might actually set the fixed height to be 550 for now. And then I'm also going to change the appearance so that the zoom, it's in a 10. And let's just see how that looks. Yeah, I think that looks a lot better. So we now have our map loaded, and the next thing we're going to want to do is actually add some icons to the map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new page, and I'm going to call this Court Upload. I'm going to clone it from the index page just for the formatting. I'm not actually going to show the map on this page. You'll see I'm going to delete it straight away. I'll change this text element to Upload a Location. And the idea here is that users can add the coordinates of the paddle court and then it's going to display on the map. So I'm going to simply add two elements to our page to allow users to do it. The first one is going to be an input. So we'll grab that and we'll put it in here. And then really importantly, the content format is actually going to be an address. There's not going to be an initial content, but we are going to add a button as well. And that's just going to say submit location. And the idea is that if a user comes in here and they type in a location of a paddle court, so for example, let's say we want to type in Stratford Paddle Club, 
We then want to be able to, for the user to submit their location, that to create an entry in our database, and then we're going to display that on the map in a minute. But before we get to that stage, what we actually need to do is set up our database because at the moment we haven't created any data types to store our location data. So what I'm going to do is under data, under data types, I'm going to create a new type called court. And I'm simply going to add for now one field name called address, which is going to be equal to geographic address. We'll create that. The second field we're going to add for now is the longitude field which is going to be a number. We'll also create a latitude field, which will also be a number. And then finally, we'll create an icon, which we'll eventually use to represent the location on the map. It's going to be of type image. And then back on our court upload page, when the user enters an address into the input box here, what can happen is we can create a new thing, we can create a court, and then the address is going to be equal to input A's value, because we're setting that as an address. So let's do that first of all. Let's refresh our page. And I actually have a bunch of addresses here of specific paddle clubs. So let's use these. In fact, we drag that in here. We'll copy this. We'll paste this in here. And then if we submit our location, we should hopefully see that created in our bubble database let's take a look app data courts and you can see here we do have an address in so one thing i obviously forgot to do was to reset the relevant inputs so next time it'll disappear when i submit an address and then a little trick uh the, the address fields that are used in bubble it relies on the google api so every time you're using a geographic address like we are when we're uploading a location it's going to use google api which is fine but I like to reduce reliance on other APIs where possible. And given we're going to be using the address in the map later on, what I like to do is actually save down the longitude and latitude values associated with the address and then use them when we're adding icons to our map. How you do this in practice is if you go back to your workflow, if we insert a new action, we're going to go to make changes to a thing. The thing we're going to change is the result of step one. And what we're going to say is its latitude is going to be equal to this court's addresses and then its latitude. Similarly, its longitude is going to be equal to this court's address, its longitude. And now hopefully we should see the longitude and latitude values saved down in our database when we add a new address. So let's do that again. And in fact, we can use the same address just to show you the difference in our database. Submit location, we've reset the relevant inputs, and if we look at our database, we'll see here now the newest entry has a more specific latitude and longitude field. And you can see there it goes out to quite a few decimal places, which is useful when you're adding very specific location data. So now that we've added a location, I'm going to show you how this looks when you load it on our map. So if we go back to our index page, which is where our map box map is, we want to get the icon onto our map representing that one paddle court that we've uploaded. So what we're going to do is under workflow, we're going to click here to add an event. And we're going to say when the page is loaded, we're going to go to element actions and we're going to go to add a list of markers to a map box map. Given we've only dropped one map box map on the page, that's the only one we can choose for that. And then we need to get a list of longitudes in here. And the way we do that is we go to do a search for court and then we go down to each item's longitude we do the same thing for latitude do a search for court each item's latitude and i'm going to leave it like that for now and you'll see here there's a couple of fields relating to icons we'll come on to that in a second but let's just refresh our index page which we can do here and you can see there we have our one location that's after popping up on our map. So I'm going to quickly add uh, a few more locations in the background here just so you can get a better sense of how it looks. Okay, so I've uploaded seven locations in total to my bubble database. And if I go back to the index page and just take a look at how they appear on the map, you can see we have our seven icons showing up there. So now that we have our icons coming up on our map, what I want to do next is distinguish between those private courts and the public courts. And 
the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to create another field in my bubble database and I'm going to call this under the court type I'm going to call this public or private question mark and it's going to be a text element and we're going to set the default here to blank we'll allow the user to choose when they're creating a new location so let's go back to our court upload page and you can see here I've added a drop down and this drop down are only two options public and private and when the user is submitting their location we're going to make changes to the court again but this time we're going to say public or private is equal to the drop down its value so if we refresh our court upload page and we just go with one of the original addresses we had here let's paste this in we're going to leave this as public submit location and then hopefully the latest entry in our bubble database will have a public next to it. So this is how we're going to be able to distinguish between the public and the private courts in our database. But of course, we also need to add an icon that represents the public or the private courts. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in two different icons to our app. Uh, one is going to be for public, one is going to be for private. I'm going to use an option set for this. If you haven't used option sets before, they're really easy for accessing variables that you're going to reuse quite a bit, and this is a good example of it. So I'm going to call this option set court icon, and I'm going to create a new option called public. We're going to create that, we're going to modify its attributes, and we want an image field here. So what I'm going to do is, under create a new attribute, I'm going to add an icon, and it's going to be of type image. And now what we can do is we can add an icon to represent our public courts. And you can see that I've uploaded a green kind of paddle ball icon. And then I'll create another option called private. Create that. You can see there we have a red paddle ball. Now, if we were happy for one icon to represent every single court, what we could do is on the index page, I might just zoom in a bit more actually. When we're adding the markers, what we could do is we could say under this icon image single field, we could go to get an option. We could get the public icon, for example, get its icon there. And then if we refreshed our map, we should see those come up on the map. But like I said, we want some to represent private, some to represent public, easily enough done. All we need to do is we need to, in our data type, we need to get the relevant image into this icon field here. And the way we can do that is when we're on our court upload page and we're submitting our location, we can make changes to a court and we can do it conditionally. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to make changes to a thing, the result of step one, which is the new court location we created. And then we're going to say icon is equal to get an option, the public option, and we're going to set its icon there only when this court is public. So again, we're only adding the public icon when it's public or private is public. And then we'll copy this, paste it in, and then we'll say it's going to be the private icon when it's public or private is private. So just quickly, I will add one more court in. Let's go with this one again. Refresh our application. And I'm actually going to make this a private one, just so you can see it on the map. Submit our location. And then if we go back to our index page, and instead of accessing the icon in this field, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that. And we're going to go to do a search for do a search for courts and then each items icon. Now we're only going to see I think one icon at the moment because we only have one uploaded. But let's just see how our red icon is looking. And you can see there it is. So very quickly, I'm going to just delete all these locations and re-upload them using either private or public, just so you can get a sense of how the full thing looks.
Okay, so in our database here, you can see we have a bunch of different locations, some with public icons, some with private. And if we refresh our index page, we should see all of them come through. There you go. That's how you can, I just, you know, maybe just one more. That's how you can add different style icons to a Mapbox map in your bubble application. Hope that's been useful. If you have any questions, you can let me know below.